Red blood cells, plasma proteins, and white blood cells are not normally found in the urine. Let's explain by taking a brief look at the filtration barrier, which consists of the glomerular capillary endothelial cells, the glomerular basement membrane, and the epithelial podocyte foot processes. The glomerular capillary endothelial cells restrict red and white blood cells while permitting macromolecules, electrolytes, solutes, and water to freely pass through the pores or fenestrations that measure 70 to 100 nanometers in diameter. The glomerular basement membrane, which contains proteoglycans conjugated to negatively charged heparin sulfate located in the lamina rara interna and externa, restrict the passage of large negatively charged molecules like albumin while restricting the passage of molecules larger than one kilodalton. The epithelial podocyte foot processes form specialized filtration slits that measure 30 to 40 nanometers in width. They express negatively charged glycoproteins throughout the cell membrane, which restrict the passage of large negatively charged molecules like plasma proteins. So from this brief description, it appears that the filtration barrier restricts the passage of molecules based on size and charge. But how is this determined? Well, it was determined experimentally by measuring the perm selectivity or clearance of neutral and charged dextrin molecules of different molecular sizes and comparing it to the clearance of inulin. The size of dextrin was increased by adding dextrin monomers to the growing polysaccharide chain. Results show that as the effective molecular radius of the neutral dextrin increases, the perm selectivity declines, which confirms that the filtration barrier discriminates based on size. Now, when cationic or positive residues were added to the dextrin monomers, we see an increase in the perm selectivity or clearance of the positively charged dextran chains at all molecular sizes, relative to that of the neutral dextran chains. Conversely, when anionic or negative residues were added to the neutral dextran molecules, the perm selectivity of the negatively charged dextran decreased significantly at all molecular sizes. Now these results are consistent with the idea that the filtration barrier restricts the passage of molecules based on size and charge, with a bias towards restricting negatively charged molecules more than neutral or positively charged molecules. Now, to prove that the charge-based perm selectivity was due to the negatively charged glycoproteins located in the cell membrane of the podocyte foot processes and glomerular basement membrane, the perm selectivity of negatively charged dextran molecules was measured before and after inducing nephrotoxic serum nephritis, which damages the filtration barrier and inhibits the expression of these negatively charged proteoglycans. The results from this classic experiment, as well as many others that followed, confirmed that negatively charged proteoglycans located in the glomerular basement membrane and podocyte foot processes play a central role in restricting the passage of molecules based on size and electric charge. Let's now apply the concept of perm selectivity of a molecule to the filtration barrier as a whole. For example, the size and charge of a molecule influences its perm selectivity. Likewise, the glomerular endothelial capillary surface area, the number of capillary pores, and the permeability, and the structural integrity of the glomerular basement membrane and podocyte foot processes influence the permeability or conductivity of the filtration barrier. This is referred to as the filtration coefficient, and it is denoted as Kf, and like perm selectivity, it ranges from 0 to 1, with 0 lacking any conductivity and 1 being maximally conductive. Now the filtration coefficient reflects conductivity of all glomeruli and plays a central role in net ultrafiltration pressure. Therefore, it is included in the equation used to calculate the net ultrafiltration pressure. 